Hi everybody, my name is Mary Stesu. I'm a professional concept artist and I wanted to make a quick video to explain to you like my process and how to do those quick painting studies that I've been doing for the camping challenge that was taking place in October 2021. So just to let you know before we start, all the painting I did were based on existing photo of other artists. I've been mostly using the color palette that I found was very interesting, or sometimes I found like some lighting situation to be quite interesting and I wanted to study that. So this is the reason why the majority of those paintings look very loose. It is because I'm just trying to grab the essence of the color palettes, of the mood, and of the lighting that is going on in some of this photography. So once I found like an interesting photography that I feel like, oh, that could be very interesting to study so I could learn a lot from it, I am starting to do a very rough sketch as you can see in the video. And I'm also using, maybe, I'm not quite sure if you can see it, but there is a grid that I'm using to help myself with the composition. And the sketch can be like pretty loose actually, it doesn't have to be overly detailed. It's really just for you to focus on getting the main shapes and the main silhouettes done. And so I start like the first color I'm going to apply and I apply that all over the painting is gonna be the main, the color that I feel like it's the most dominant in the picture. Usually I actually use the color of the sky. The color of the sky will bounce in the entire environment and therefore it will influence a lot on what you can actually see. Once I got my main dominant color established, I'm going to use the lasso tool to be able to select big areas of the painting. So you can see here that I'm applying some green because there's going to be like some grass and bushes there. But I don't cover everything 100%. I do let some pocket of blue here and there because I know like the color of the sky, as I explained earlier, is going to influence the color of the grass. So I want to keep a little bit of that underpainting so I can have that sense of like unification, like so the paint feels is more yeah, yeah unified. So I've established like some big ball shape for the trees in the background. So as you can see, I am not trying to detail the foliage. I'm really going for those big blobs of green in the background. And later on by using like different color shadows, I'm going to try to sculpt that foliage. I'm also using the stroke of my brush to indicate volume. Here you can see I'm starting to add a more detail to the grass as well because, well, yeah, so my thing like grass is green, so I just take one green color and I should just use it for all the grass, but actually, not really. So we cannot draw or paint every single uh, stem or tiny leaf or that we can that that would exist in that meadow or prairie right here right but we can give the illusion of like the multitude of and the variety of plants or grass uh, that are present there by adding some variation in the color So here we can see like I'm starting to work on the foreground and I'm adding like some darker color in the foreground. That's because usually when you do painting, you want to use value. It just helps your eyes to have a better understanding of the depth in your painting. So your painting doesn't feel too flat, too 2D and too boring. So usually a very simple rule is that the closer to the foreground elements gonna be, the darker the value is gonna be. Whenever I want to detail a bit more, again, I'm going to use the lasso tool. Like here, I'm using the lasso tool, for example, to 
create some foliage for a bush that's going to be uh, kind of like in the foreground. So before I explain that in the foreground element, usually you want your, your items to be a bit darker. So we have a sense of depth for the painting. At the same time, to reinforce that sense of depth, imagine you're sitting there. Um, the closer to you, you will be able to see things with more detail. So playing around with value, playing around with detail is an excellent way to indicate your audience what objects are close to you and what objects are actually more far away from you. Next, I am using again the lasso tool to do the fence that is in the foreground. So here I'm not going to use a dark color because on the original uh, photo, the fence is white. I'm not going to use white color because, well, we are in the shadows. But I am not going to use a gray color too. Usually we think, oh, if white color goes in the shadow, I'm just going to paint it gray. Well, remember what I told you at the very beginning of that video is that the color of the sky is going to influence a lot of the color of anything that's going to be in the scene, right? So this is what's going to happen for that fence. Yes, the fence is white and yes, it's in a shadow, so it should be darker. But because it gets influenced by the color of the sky, it won't be gray. It will actually be blue. The reason why I use the lasso tool is because a lot of time the mistake I was doing in the past is that I would just straight up use the brush. But the brush sometimes cannot be extremely detailed. When you look at like traditional painting in a museum, you can see that the artists are actually very good at balancing when to have sharp and smooth uh, silhouettes. And I realized that when I was just using my brush, everything was too smooth, everything looked really out of shape, and everything looked very blurry, and it was not very interesting. Having strong, bold silhouette and shape in a painting is actually extremely important. So sometimes you can see that the selection feels like very, very sharp and maybe it's a bit too much. So usually I will go back later on with the same brush and I'm going to kind of like add some color to kind of smudge the lighter and the darker color together so it doesn't feel too sharp and a bit more pentally. I had like someone asking me on one of my previous paintings on Instagram like, uh, if I have any tip and advice about like how to simplify the shape of a tree and yet make it still like quite interesting. Honestly, I found like the best advice that I heard from uh, from several uh, art director is that you need to squint your eyes when you look at a photography to make the whole photography go very blurry and when and when everything goes blurry you no longer see a tree with like that distinct uh, distinct foliage distinct trunk and stuff like that all you see is the blob of color yet your brain is really smart even if for you you think like I'm just drawing blobs of color it's weird it doesn't make sense but your brain will figure it out like I understand this is a tree and I understand this is a foliage so yeah squint your eyes try to simplify the shape as much as you can and just keep on practicing I know it looks very scary at the very beginning to simplify everything to like blob of color but trust me eventually it's gonna be for the best and I'm using the same process for the cliff. I'm first using like the lasso tool to be able to have like some sharp uh, elements into the painting. And I'm gonna use some regular brush stroke just to add a little bit more of gradient in the color so it doesn't look too flat. Even in the shadows, if an object is in the shadows, they're gonna be like part that are still like kind of lit by the environmental bounce light. Here, I am not going to go for like a lighter beige color for the shadows. I'm actually going to use the color of the sky. Again, the color of the sky is extremely important. It influences a lot of the colors. So it just makes the cliff feel more like it belongs to this environment. Moreover, I tend to feel like rocks tend to be a bit more reflective than other materials such as leaves, so I'm going a bit extra bold on the use of blue color for this one. 
I really want to have a strong contrast between the light and the shadow here because I really want that the part of the clay that is highlighted to pop out. So in the shadow, instead of using like a bluish color, I'm actually going to use like some warm color here so we can have a strong contrast not just between light versus shadow but also warm color versus cold color. I think my trees are a bit too round and a bit too chubby so now we're gonna like use a mask to be able to add some holes here and there so we get more of the feeling of like this thing is made out of leaf and not just of blobs. So I am not explaining to you how to use a mask here because this video is mostly about the painting process. Uh, and not really about like how to use the tool with Photoshop and stuff. If you are interested, you can let me know and eventually, if I got the time, I will be able to make a quick video to explain to you what are the main tools I'm using with Photoshop, which will be like the use of different layers or the use of mask. As you can see, I'm adding some orange brown color to the, to the foliage at the moment. It's because like, well, Again, just like for the grass, the grass doesn't have a unified color and the same for the leaves of the tree, there is actually some variation in the color. So obviously in a painting like this you cannot paint every leaf, you cannot detail all this thing. So adding like some variation of color here kind of help to feel, to make the wall foliage look a bit more natural. So I'm adding some purple here. I not quite sure why <laughs> oops uh, i also used some purple on the fence on the foreground it just felt like uh i really hate this yeah i just went with my gut on this one sorry about that it just it just felt right i i really don't like saying this i'm really sorry guys it's more because i would like to make a video to tell you like yeah it's all about a technique it's about a process so even you can do it but there is a few moments, maybe in 5 or 10% of your painting is going to rely on a gut feeling and this will come the more you practice, the more you train, the more you experience, it will, it will come, don't worry about this. Um, actually, I want to be honest, I know a lot of people who want to learn how to paint, they tend to believe that 90% of the painting is gut feeling and 10% is technique. Uh, it is actually quite the reverse, I found out. <laughs> I try to explain as much as I can from my process, uh, but I think there is some things that you're so used to do that you don't really think about it and it gets a bit difficult to explain to someone else why did you take set, uh, a decision or another one. Here I'm adding a little bit more of variation in the grass. I want something a bit darker because while well, those bushes are still gonna project some shadow on the grass and I think it worked as a very nice transition from the dark color of the bush to the grass so it doesn't feel too sudden or too sharp. Just as a quick information as well, I do work on multiple layers as you can see on the right side of the screen. Um, I know a lot of people recommend to not use so many layers. I am not that confident yet. Hopefully in the future, if I practice harder, I will be able to work on a single layer. But at the moment, I just feel like more confident uh, to work on different layer. It is uh, making my workflow much faster and easier. At the end of the day as well, these studies are really for me to improve uh, and learn more about composition and color and things like this. So really, like either I use a layer or not, it doesn't really matter for anyone else. So I'd rather do something that makes me feel comfortable so I can also enjoy the process. Alright, so this is when we are really, really getting into the understanding of value. I just turned my painting in black and white because I wanted to know, hey, 
can my painting read very well? And I zoomed out and you can see, no, it does not. It does not read well at all. So this is when actually you can zoom out to see, can I read what I'm painting? Is this working? And if it's not, well, this is when you're gonna play around with your value to be able to make your painting more readable. I am really going to go back to all the knowledge I got from my concept art school and I'm just going to like change around the value even if it doesn't, the color doesn't match the photography anymore. So the painting by itself look nice. So I like if the sky is a bit brighter because it feel like it's very easy now to see the silhouette of the trees. But I can see like, oh, my tent is not visible at all. It's supposed to be the selling point. So I have either the option to make it darker or to make it lighter. I like the brighter color the most. So now it's like, how can I play with the surrounding of the tent? So it pops out a bit more. Most of the time I'm trying to keep my drawing relatively small because it's a very good way to actually check if the composition and if the painting is working overall it is extremely important to make sure that even like if your painting is very small people can look at it and understand what's going on now already by zooming out you can feel like it reads so much better already and now we remove the black and white layers to see how it looks like with colors and it looks not great so this is going to be like the third part of the painting process is that we're going to have to go back and forth try to keep the value that we just established or the different value of darker gray or lighter gray to make sure that the composition can read well but we are going to adjust the color a little bit more so it looks you know prettier because it's not really that pretty right now Again, you can see for the tent, I'm adding some blue tint on the top of the tent and also in the shadow of the tent. Again, color of the sky, influencing, blah, 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 blah. I think you get it now. So I think like for the foliage, it was a bit too detailed. They were a bit too too much contrast. So I think like the because the foliage had so much contrast and detail to it, it was dragging a little bit of attention. Like look at me, I got like contrast and detail. So the thing is like no, I want you to look at the tent, not at the tree at the background. So I tried to simplify the foliage by adding a bit more like brush track to make the transition and the gradient. Uh, change from like a, a color to another one a bit more simple. I'm adding some highlight to the tree because I want to still have a bit more of contrast to make sure that when you look at the painting, you're just gonna look at this area first. you can see here I'm actually like uh, removing some detail from the grass kind of like giving an impression of smudging between the bushes the tree and the grass because I really want to create the contrast like where there is no strong uh, sharp edges 
the you you understand that okay there is nothing to look here but it would contrast enough with like the tent that is very sharp that you understand this is where you need to look at so it's one of the key thing whenever you're painting or drawing it's like try to prioritize your painting to kind of help the audience to understand where are they supposed to look at and again having strong contrast having sharp edges re or having like a very nice balance between sharp and smooth edges or like a low contrast versus high contrast area really really helps to actually guide the eye of the audience and if you like now the painting it's pretty much done it's really a matter of like how much detail do i want to add in or not or can I be bothered to add this detail or not? Because I feel like for me, like it's the composition is pretty much there. Uh, there is always like thing I could like fidget with, like some detail I could like play around. But overall, I think like this actually is enough. So yeah, I know a lot of people might think like, oh, if you paint digitally, you're kind of cheating because you can do all those changes. And um, yeah, they are not wrong, but it's also like it really depends on down to the individual. Like what, what are you more comfortable to like uh, work with? I still believe that I am learning a ton of things by working this way. But I can see that someone that is an hardcore uh, traditional artist would kind of look down on my process. And that's totally fine. We all have different ways to work. It's a, it's a free universe, you know, <laughs> paint the way you want. And uh, so this is again just sharing my own process and uh, hopefully can be helpful for some of you guys. I really hope that uh, this video was helpful for some of you guys. Again, I apologize if sometime I miss you some word. I am not a native English speaker. I'm really doing my best here. It's also very complicated for me to be able to speak so fast in a language that is not mine. So <laughs> I hope it was all right. And I hope you guys were able to understand uh, the majority of my process. I really hope again it was useful. And again, this is the way I work. I am not saying like this is how you should work too. Uh, no, 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 no. It is just like, okay, I work like this. I explain to you if it can help you out. It's great. If you think like you're using a way of painting that is better for you, more suitable and that works better for you, it's totally fine as well. So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was very fun for me to do it. A bit stressful as well because I'm not used to make this kind of content. But let me know if you have any feedback on it. And if you have any question, oh, please send me any message. I'm sometimes a bit uh, long to reply because uh, I'm not really good with that social media thingy. But I'll do my best. So... Yeah, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like practice a bit more and have fun with us.